negative keywords are now very dangerous, very dangerous. Google will allow you to add negative keywords as match types. Um, so then, and then bidding strategies. The bidding strategy for broad is it works a lot better with running wide open, which is what I like to, like to call it. No TCPA and no ROAS, at least for about 60 days. The reason being is that it's learning the person. It's not learning the search term. That's why the search terms don't really make sense, but the results still come in. It's learning the people. And then it says, whatever that person searches, eh, less important. Why? Well, there's not a big group of them. They're all spread out. This person wanted a, a cheap email. This one was searching in Spanish for a search, but I didn't make one change. And that's what was really interesting. It was just broad match and TCPA. That's it. And this thing just grew legs on its own. Uh, the broad match will match the brand. It, it wasn't in this campaign. It was in a different campaign I'll, or a different account. I know I'll share that with you all here. Um, but the broad match will sometimes give a false positive. And if the client finds it, it's game over for us. But if we find it, it's, it's good for us. So in the search terms here, what we'll see is, let's do this. I added the brand in here on purpose so that I can actually capture it and not have it scoop up in our broad keywords. But we are, um, so hammock. So non-brand, brand. So I'm like, why does my hammock have a 5,500 row as? <laughs> oh, okay, that's why. <laughs> so it will absolutely find your brand name, even if the keyword's not brand, why? Because it has the DSA element built in. It scanned the page, found that that is broadly matched to that and actually gets conversions. So here you go, here's more conversions and here's more clicks. Now I'm gonna have to go back to last year to find this, but this is what, what is really interesting. Hammock chair. Hammock, hammock, hammock with stand, hammock chair. So see how much this is happening. In two years ago, this would have never happened. Broad match would not have captured the brand name. It, it wouldn't have. So, or not at this level at least. So now I'm talking about the bidding strategies uh, and what the moral of that story is and make sure you have the negative keyword of the brand. Um, now the bit, then before we get to bidding strategies, just talk about negative keywords. Negative keywords are now very dangerous, very dangerous. Google will allow you to add negative keywords as match types. But remember the match types are now kind of just eh, close enough. Uh, a, a phrase match close variant. A hammock and little, the only hammocks, technically they're correct. It was a phrase match because it had hammock and hammock in there when a close variant is eh, close enough. So just know that when you do your, your negative keywording, if you negative keyword a phrase, it, you essentially negative keyword abroad, a broad match. So as just as wide and crazy as broad and phrases are starting to get now, same thing with our negative keywords. So sometimes we can accidentally stop a search term we wanted to come in from adding a negative keyword that Google said, wait a minute, that is also, uh, that's also a thing. I'll give you a quick example of First Solutions 8. We bid on pay per click advertising. It matched for, get paid to click advertising. And I had an exact match, by the way. That shouldn't have happened. We all know that that match type shouldn't have, should have happened, but because Google is loosening the, the, um, loosening the restrictions on match types, you also have to think about the counter of that inside of exact and inside of negatives. So here's our campaign here, for example, when we look at just the last, uh, last in June here, in June and, and I'll just go over through here, I actually stopped this because my search terms were, I was trying to do a little bit more keyword sculpting and I just ended up giving up on it. Right now there's a, does anybody know what, what GG ads are? Does anyone know what GG ads are? Raise your hand, chat, whatever it is. Anybody know what GG ads are? No, I don't either. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so Google Ads service phrase match match for GG ads 61 times, and I spent $275 on it. Yeah, close enough. Well, when I when I negative GG ads, my Google Ads service started to tank. It started all of a sudden get less and less and less clicks. So my negative of GG ads stopped Google Ads service from running. 
And I, neg I, I negative this one as an exact because it just kept happening. So my exact match negative stopped my positive phrase match that had nothing to do with each other stopped showing. I end up just, <laughs> I end up just getting giving up on it. I'm like just I'm just stopping it. It's like exclude 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 exclude. Uh, there's you know Google ads. There's GG ads again. Awesome that came back for fun. So what I found is that I'm I'm kind of just giving up on search for a phrase and exact right now. YouTube's working with us well, but because we have a lot of competitors here, uh, that's that's been happening. So when you add a negative of something. Just be very, very, very mindful that it could also stop your positive. Um, so then, and then bidding strategies. The bidding strategy for broad is it works a lot better with running wide open, which is what I like to like to call it. No TCPA and no ROAS, at least for about 60 days. The reason being is that it's learning the person. It's not learning the search term. That's why the search terms don't really make sense, but the results still come in. It's learning the people, and then it says whatever that person searches, eh, less important. I know that there's a person that is, you know, going to these websites that are searching these keywords, that are looking at you know, blogs featuring these overlapping topics that have, you know, also been to this, that use these apps, that visited these locations, um, all that taken into consideration, and then when they do a search. It's going to broadly match to what you have. It says, yes, I know they searched something that was wrong, but they, we matched it to your keyword because these look like the people that are converting. So when you add when you add in a TCPA and you say, no, 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 stop all of your learning. Just focus on the same keywords that focus a lot of times. It will work well if there's a high amount of volume, but if there's not a lot of learning that went into it first, it just dies or has low performance. So I like to take a performance max approach where you let it run without a restriction, but you increase or decrease your activity per day. Um, there's another company that we ran a, uh, a broad match approach for it. And I think it was a gas three. The client said, Hey, uh, I want to get $35 leads. And I said, okay. And he says, can we get there? And I said, sure. Um, it's going to take me a little while though. He goes, that's okay. So we started this campaign in, uh... this is not a glitch. I'm interrupting the video you're watching because I need to remind you that I'm always looking for people to join our team. So if you're passionate about Google ads and you want to work with the best Google ads agency on the planet, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. Speaking of working with the best Google ads agency on the planet, if you're having trouble with Google ads and you want professional help, that's what we do. You can go to solate.com. That's S O L eight.com to apply for your free, no obligation action plan. And if I've given you any level of value at all, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. That's how we juice the YouTube algorithm so they actually know that I know what I'm talking about. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or confessions, hit me below in the comments. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. We started this in December of 2021. And uh, I actually launched in November. That's what I, I remember when I did it. This was like, that doesn't, doesn't make sense. Uh, we started in November of 2021. And in November to March, our cost per conversion was $59. Then through, let's say, uh, April to July, our cost per conversion is $46. It's 49 here. In the last 30 days, let me see what it is. Yeah, it's back up to 74 because he wanted to scale. But what was interesting is when I spoke with him, I think it was uh, in June, or in June um, I hit the goal, the $35. Um, What's really interesting is if you look at the last two months compared to the previous two months, I lost 53% of my cost per conversion, got 43% more conversions through um, through January 30th through May, May, uh, May 31st. So if we look from here though, from February 1st to this area here, that it went from, it decreased the CPA and increased the CPCs right on target to my goal when I talked to him, he said, hey, can you get me $35 CPAs? I said, yeah, it's gonna take me a little while. We'll start November, we'll just kind of hang tight. I'll, I'll get you there. He goes, okay, cool. I went from about 60 down to 35, doubled everything um, in cost for conversions. I didn't touch the thing. <laughs> my change history from February, March, April, May, June, I didn't make one change. I lost half of my CPA and I doubled the amount of conversions and I didn't make one change.
because I was using broad mesh, just letting Google do its thing. It was a test for a client. So I said at one time, I said, this will work eventually. And I just let it go. Uh, it, was, it was an unpaid test. So I really didn't, I didn't really care to look at it every single day. But I did make one change. And that was really interesting. It was just broad match and TCPA. That's it. And this thing just grew legs on its own. Like there's, and so what's scary about this, oh wait, that just changed visuals again. Uh, there we go. So what's scary about this whole thing is without making a change that happened, uh, now it's seasonality, but he was like, hey, great job getting it $35. I didn't think that was possible. And we're like, yeah, you got it. You know, hard work and dedication. I didn't touch the thing for six months. So that's what I'm saying is when you negative keyword yourself out, you don't need to. When you want to use broad match and target cost per acquisition, give it six months and it'll get there. You can learn quickly without TCPA and then put it on TCPA later on and it'll, it'll hang tight there for a long time. And I'm in a very small geographical region. Well, actually that's that's unfair for me to say. Is anybody else that's more, um, it's Hong Kong. So I don't even know the, the, how many people are there. It's probably like a billion, but uh, it's a small geographical region. We're not, we're not, in, uh, not in the entire country. But you know, it's it's 42,000 impressions from February, March, April through May. But I got us down to where we needed to be at 35 dollars cost per acquisition, the latter half of the test. Okay, uh, any questions there now? So far. Yeah, John, there was one in, in the chat. I'm gonna read it to you, okay? It says, yep. do you think if we were to create a campaign with only broad terms targeting audience similar to our website visitors, could we help us? Could could help us filter a bit and get in front of this audience while not spending unnecessarily. Or maybe if we could test both, one with similar to website visitors in observation and one targeting. So it's kind of like a like an RLSA sort of thing, is what I imagine. Then, but whoever asked the question, could you un unmute? I can't see them. So sorry. If if you want to. If not, that's okay. Um, but it sounds like almost like an RLSA, though. Hi. Yeah, that's hey. me. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> is it, Hi, you're talking about more like an RLSA and then a, like an A-B test of like one with observation, one with targeting, see how the RLSA does versus the, or is it, or are you saying the, do you say website audiences? Uh, yeah, more likely like kind of to do an experiment, like to leave it open, but like kind of filter on the profile of the audience that we are showing our, our keywords for our ad to, you know? Kind of like because if we leave it that open, I'm sure you got amazing results based on what you show, and this is really, really great information. But yeah. you still leave it open for some other unnecessarily costly search terms, you know. Yeah. So I was thinking if we could filter it a bit, maybe, or maybe we could just keep it an observation for a bit and see if most of our conversions are actually coming from the audience that are similar to our website visitors. Oh, similar to I'm stupid. I thought you said website, uh, website visitors. I'm I read I heard the question wrong. So I was like, well, I think a website visitor audience would be an RLSA. So you're saying put an observation mode on an audience of like essentially wide open plus similar to our audience and see who is capturing uh, what's getting the better result. That's brilliant. That's genius. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone go do that now, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> Uh, all the uh, special strategists and, and, and everyone do do that. That's an amazing, amazing idea. Um, thank you for that. That's awesome. Um, yeah, an observation mode of similar to our, our website visitors to see which one is performing better on, on broad. Um, the one thing that I would have to say that could be a potential fail point that we'd have to look at is because broad goes after so many, like one impression, one clicks, um, if they don't overlap that much, it doesn't necessarily mean that they didn't. It just means that I don't know if Google knew if they looked like that when they had their first impression and first click. Um, because they're so widely spread out, uh, audience targeting may give you a false positive just because it was like the first time they searched the first click and it was kind of top of funnel. Did they look like our website visitors? There may not be enough information for Google to say yes, based on their search patterns, because it sometimes is so one click to conversion. Um, that's another reason why TCPA doesn't really work that well in the beginning is because we don't know who these people are. Why? Well, there's not a big group of them. They're all spread out. This person wanted a, a cheap BBL. This one was searching in Spanish for a surgeon. Do they look like each other? Not really, but they both converted. Um, so it'd be interesting to see that test. That's brilliant for observation mode. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my goodness, you guys, this is amazing. Uh, so first of all, um,
Shout out to Ankar on our team who figured this out. This is unbelievable. Uh, this is only the second time I'm doing this, by the way, so you're going to watch me bumble through this. But uh, in the top menu here, go to reports. And when you're in reports, you're going to say custom.